Hey, welcome to my garage. Uh, this is the start of Solomon's new How to Get Into Backcountry Ski Touring series. I'm Mike Douglas. And I'm Stan Ray. And today we are gonna talk about the basics, just the most basic equipment that you need to get started. Now, we're not gonna get too techy, and if that's what you're into, go check out Blister Review or wildsnow.com. Yeah, we're not gonna be talking grams and millimeters. We're gonna put all this stuff in layman's terms and make it as simple as possible. Now, the first thing that you wanna look into when getting new gear is bindings. That's right. So the reason we start with bindings is because depending on which binding you get, that will indicate which boot you need to get, as well as the skis that you want to ski on. So if we flash back to the very first Touring binding, which came out in the mid 80s, it's a low tech pin binding, similar to the Solomon MTN here. Now the good things about it, very, very lightweight, sturdy construction, very simply engineered. But there's some bad things. This binding doesn't release like a normal binding, so you're giving up a little bit on the safety side. Also. Uh, there's no shock absorption in this binding. So when you're skiing around a ski area, you're gonna get a very rough ride. I kind of liken it to the idea of riding a mountain bike without suspension on a rough trail. Now, flashing forward a few years, about 15, 12, 15 years ago, the plate or the frame binding came out, similar to this one right here. This is the Solomon Guardian binding. It was kind of revolutionary in its time. And as you can see here, you pop this, the entire binding moves. And the reason that worked well is because a lot of people wanted to use traditional alpine ski boots. You do not need the pin inserts in your toes to make these things work. But of course, there's some downsides. They're very heavy. The pivot point is quite far forward, which can be tiring over a whole day. And of course, because they're such a big bulky thing on your ski, they can change the performance of your ski. So at Solomon, we worked on trying to find a solution between these two bindings for a long time, and we finally came up with it. This is the Shift, which is known as a hybrid binding. It combines the best of, of all the worlds in a lightweight, safe package. So you've got your traditional Alpine binding, heel piece, toe piece, with all the safety standards that you want. It's in a lightweight package. But if you want to go touring, it flips open here, just like a transformer and you've got the pin insert. So you've got the traditional pin style tiering setup. The second thing that's really good about this is it's got this all the suspension that you want in a regular Alpine binding. So I go skiing any given day, whether I'm just gonna go up and bash on the hill all day, or I think I might go ski touring. With this binding, I've always got all the options I want. So for me, I've kind of left the others behind and I pretty much ski 90% of the time on the shift. Now the only time that I ski anything else these days is occasionally I'll take out the MTN if I'm going for like a, a really long day of ski touring or a multi-day adventure where I've got a big heavy pack on and weight is super important. But I think for 90% of the people watching this video, I think the shift is your best option. So you've picked your binding, and if you went with a pin binding or the shift, the Alpine boot won't work for you because it doesn't have the pin inserts. So you're gonna need a ski touring boot with pin inserts like this one. Another key feature about the ski touring boot is the walk mode. Pop that open, undo your buckles and your strap, and now you have a huge range of motion which will make it way more comfortable on the way up. Get to the top, put that back down, make sure it's locked in. Do your buckles and your power strap, and now you have a great downhill performance ski boot. Another thing that's really nice about a ski touring boot is having a rubber sole. Sometimes you end up boot packing when you're ski touring, and you get a little extra traction from it, which is really nice and gives you that extra confidence. And at the end of the day, when you're walking through the parking lot, these puppies, well, they'll prevent you from slipping, and maybe even from falling on a table at Apri Ski. This is a ski boot I ski every day. It's the Shift Pro 130. I love it because it's comfortable, has great performance downhill and always has the option to go into ski touring mode when I need to go up. So now that you've chosen a binding and you've figured out a boot, the next thing you gotta choose is a ski. Now if you opted for one of the super lightweight binding versions like the MTN here, then you probably wanna match it with a lightweight ski, something like the Solomon MTN 95. Now this ski is designed with weight in mind it's perfect for ski touring. It works really well off piste in powder snow, but because it's so light, it sacrifices a little bit of performance in the ski area. So you would not want to put a normal binding on this and just bash it around the hill. If you're thinking more about bashing around the hill 
or skiing a lot of powder and skiing fast and hard, then you want to look at something like the Salomon QST 118 or Salomon QST 106. These are fatter waist skis. They're designed for skiing in deep snow when the powder's deep. They've got a lot of rocker up here in the tip and also a lot of rocker in the tail. Now, they're awesome in the deep snow and untracked and cut up crud, but as soon as the ski hill gets kind of packed out, these ones can be a little hard on the body. All this extra width in the middle can add a little bit of torque to the knees. And that's why for someone like me who probably skis powder maybe 30 to 40% of the time and the rest of the time in the ski hill, I focus on the Salomon QST 99. So it's 99 millimeters underfoot, a little bit narrower, still wide enough up here in the shovel so that I get all that float in the powder. When the powder's gone and I'm just ripping around the ski hill or I want to go for a ski tour and have a lightweight setup, the QST 99 works really well because it's a little heavier than the 95. The performance characteristics are super solid. You can take this ski anywhere and it's kind of become a one ski quiver for me. I probably ski this setup with the shift binding about 90% of the time. Now we're gonna talk about ski poles. The main thing you're gonna to wanna to look for in a ski pole when you get into ski touring is having it adjustable. I like skiing it a little bit smaller. When I'm ski touring, I like to make it a little bigger so I get more leverage and more purchase out of the pole. The clamp system I find is what works the best, just like this one on the MTN Carbon S3. Another great feature is the grip. Some have longer grips, some have shorter grips. And this is more personal preference. I like having a bit of a longer grip because when you're ski touring and you're side hilling and you're doing quick kick turns, I can have my right pole a little shorter than my left pole. And then I do a kick turn and I switch it up. So that makes it pretty easy. And also having the power strap. These are great because you can ski with them. And let's say you get snagged on a branch. These things will just click right out. Or in the unfortunate event that you get stuck in an avalanche, your pole will come off and you won't be stuck to these things that will be dragging you down. And lastly, the baskets, some have swivel baskets and some have static baskets. I personally prefer a static basket, but that's up to you. The one main feature you're gonna wanna make sure you have is having it to be adjustable. Once you've got your basic ski equipment setup figured out, the next thing you are gonna wanna do is get a set of climbing skins. The skins are the things that you put on the bottom of your skis that give you the grip so that you can walk up the mountain. Now there's a ton of different brands of skins out there. Most of them are pretty good. You can get synthetic skins, skins made with natural fibers. You can get a mix. Um, most skins have glue on the bottom, so you get this sticky surface here. You can also buy glueless skins as well. Because I live in a moist environment, uh, a wet place, I prefer the skins with the glue. They just seem to be a little bit more reliable when it's wet. Uh, when it comes to sizing skins, you may get lucky. You might be able to find a pair that fits your skis just right, but chances are you're gonna have to cut them. It's not that hard to do. It just takes a few minutes. And we're gonna get into some of the details about how to use your skins in future episodes. So now you got your skins and all your ski gear, and you need something to put them in. That's when you need a backpack. For a day pack, I look for something around 20 to 30 liters. And the first thing I look for is that it's comfortable, has good waist straps, and good chest straps. So then, the backpack can stay tight to your back and it doesn't bounce around when you're skiing rough terrain. Another key component about having a good backpack is having two compartments. One that's easily accessible to reach all your safety gear, and the other to put everything else in. And lastly, Make sure it has straps for your skis, so you can strap your skis when you're boot packing up something gnarly, or if you're just walking to, to the ski hill. There are a few things that you should always have with you for a day of backcountry ski touring. The first thing is your beacon or avalanche transceiver. Now this is a little device that sends out a signal so that if you get in an avalanche, your friends can find you and vice versa. It's got a transmit mode and also a receive mode. And the best thing to do is find one that works for you. There's a ton of brands out there and they're changing all the time. The technology is constantly evolving. One thing that's really important is you wanna find one that you're comfortable with, you understand how it works, and then you wanna make sure you practice with it. The second thing, is an avalanche probe. Now this is essentially a collapsible metal pole that you can assemble very quickly. You wanna get one that's made out of usually aluminum or, or tough carbon fiber so that it's stiff and it's not gonna break. And you can 
probe down into the snow and locate a victim who's buried underneath. So once again, you wanna practice with this and you wanna make sure you can use it quickly and effectively. The third piece is a shovel. Shovel's critical because once you locate that victim under the snow, you wanna be able to dig them out. You'd be blown away at how fast the snow sets up and gets hard after an avalanche. So make sure you get one with a metal blade. Critical, do not go plastic, always go metal. So those are just three of the basics that I make sure I always have with me 100% of the time. There's a whole bunch of other stuff you should probably bring with you, and we're gonna get into that on future episodes. If there's anything from a basic gear standpoint that we missed or any questions you have, make sure you leave them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer. Hopefully, we'll take care of a lot of those things in upcoming episodes. Until then, thanks a lot for paying attention. See ya.